What is up guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup back with another sort of news and rumory video. And I know it's like the first time I've made a video this year where I haven't had to wear a hat because I haven't had some crazy lockdown hairdo going on, but I am losing it. I'm losing it at the back. So, you know, hats are gonna be part of the future of me and YouTube. And I have only just finished work today, which is why I got this shirt on. I'm not dressing fancy for you guys. I've just literally come in and we're gonna do a little bit of a video tech discussion. And as always, these are just my opinions, things that I'm talking about. A lot of these videos are always going to be rumors and leaks. Just take them with an absolute pinch of salt. Um, and it's more just for us to discuss about in the comment section because I like talking to all you lovely geeks and gamers out there. All right. So the news that we've got to talk about today is that the 3060 Ti has been delayed. A couple of weeks, same sort of scenario with the RTX 3070. A little bit of delay there. And there has also been some Ryzen 5 5600 Cinebench leaks, which we know are probably going to be legit the cpu is out in two days and it's giving the i5 10600k jesus christ those intel cpu namings are the temp gen i've said for ages they just need to get rid of the i range and come up with a new one i'm gonna waffle here but that's what i'm talking about it's a mouthful don't like talking about it don't like talking about them cpus but it's giving the 10600k a good spanking which we knew it was probably going to do anyway because everybody loves amd at the moment don't they they're knocking out some good stuff and like I just said, just making this video after work, you're going to hear little pitter patter of people, little people running around feet and stuff. So, you know, there's going to be some background noise and you can admire my lovely girly wallpaper behind me because we're doing the camera mounted above my monitor. So then the 3060 Ti, let's just talk a little bit about the leak specs first. Um, and hopefully they should be it because most of the stuff leaking numbers, CUDA cores and all that stuff for the last few months have been pretty bang on, haven't they? They've been pretty much where they're at they're more like you know a secret that everybody knows they're not really rumors anymore people know but we're looking at 4864 cuda cores eight gigabytes of gddr6 vram 38 ray tracing cores with a base clock of 1410 megahertz but we know it's going to be higher than that keep that gpu cool it's probably going to go a lot more um you'll be able to hopefully push that gpu to 2000 megahertz and over i'm um, using the same i think it's based on the same gpu that's in the 3070 just to slightly cut down one so it'll be a 3070 that couldn't quite be binned to a 3070 and hopefully there should be a 3060 releasing a little bit later down the line as well although we don't know if that'll be a gtx but maybe thinking this time that you know nvidia might just go all rtx but i still think it's a struggle going to be having ray tracing down to not even under like under the six series like the five series i just can't see us seeing you know ray tracing down at 150 pounds not quite yet anyway so originally it was going to be announced for the 17th of november that's when it was going to be announced which i think is one day but before the 6800 and the 6800 xt comes out so you could say it's a bit shady there and i think that would have been you know a good move for it because a lot of people might be thinking you know that might be in your top line spending between 300 and 400 pounds on a gpu but if you really wanted something and there wasn't something coming out before christmas you might be thinking okay then i'm willing to go to 550 600 i'm just gonna have a bit of a splash out it's been a crap year sod it do you know what i mean so maybe that's a good reason to announce before because we know the six series you know top selling card you only have to look at 1060s i know the price of the six series has gone up all gpus have gone up in price but you only have to look at how many people are still using a 1060 and a lot of people probably want to upgrade okay and they would probably end up spending more on the video thinking you know you know this is the gpu we want to send you away so yeah originally it's going to be launching on the 17th but now apparently it has been delayed until december the 2nd okay so it's been delayed two weeks now, I feel like there could be a little bit of confusion here. I'm trying to use my investigation mind here. Maybe it was always going to be announced on the 17th, the day before AMD, but then it was going to come out two weeks later. Now, the delay either way, you know, if they want to do it longer time to make GPUs is something that they need to do. I made that video about the 1070 being sold out in no time. And I know a few people said, you know, maybe I was F5 and too much or I should have just waited. But I did have that page running on scan where I was just waiting for the FE. And I was sort of doing the showing you where all the sites were locked up for about four or five minutes. But then after that, I was straight on just taking my time, trying to get onto sites. And that FE1 did load for me. I did put it in my basket and it wouldn't give me one. And I had to make it load again and it still didn't let me have one. So as much as people did get a 3070, a lot of people didn't. So if they're going to put it back, fine. I, I just feel like this is what it was always going to be. Announcement on the 17th, release on the 2nd. Let me know what you think. I don't think it's been delayed. I just think that's what always was, always was going to happen. And to be fair, this is the graphics card for me. I love reviewing the six series of graphics cards because they offer great bang for buck. 
they're just you know they're not they're not classes mid-range but they are sort of mid-range entry level aren't they but you can still get a lot out of them one thing i've always loved about the six series is that you can generally play all those nice big open world games that all most of them maxed out 60 fps which is all you really need i think when you're playing like tomb raiders and witches and horizon all those games i'm happy 60 fps is fine okay it'd be nice to have 120 yeah it's nice to have 140 but for those games they're not fast paced just chill out just play them relax but then on the flip side of that the six series can always punch some serious frames in esports titles and then when it comes to first person shooters that demand a little bit more you're still generally around the 80 to 100 fps and if you want to start mixing up your settings that's when you can start driving 144 hertz monitors with a six series graphics card all right i'm happy to lower settings when i'm playing competitively and i'm doing all that stuff just so i can you know you know, I'd rather have the kills, I'd rather help my teammates, that's what I mean, it's all well and good to see it nice, but like, if you're moving so fast, it's, to me, it just doesn't matter, that's just my opinion, okay, we're all welcome to it, but yeah, the 6 Series is a card that I'm really looking forward to, yes, it would have been nice to get some of the other cards that are coming out, but to be fair, it is a bit out of my price range, because the channel does cost a lot to run, there's a lot of other stuff I buy, I like to make videos more than I like to play games, okay, even though I make a lot of videos about playing games. Um, and about computer hardware so, so the 6 series always offers terrific value for me and something that i like to have and i can see that as well just from views and stuff i've generally whenever i've got a higher end card out i've never had as many views on it as i had like my 6 series videos those videos are the ones that really like punch 6 series 6 series or like 50 ti's to 750 ti's 750 ti was pretty crap but you know it did get a lot of views and, and and 1650 supers and stuff like that they're the cards that most people end up buying not everyone has got a thousand pound bank to drop on a gpu so yeah my opinions but moving over to that it gets me for the amd cpus and we'll talk about this a little bit in a minute because i just can't decide if i want to buy a ryzen uh 4000 well 5000 series but fourth gen ryzen at launch i can't decide if i want to buy one i know i'm very indecisive at the moment just buy buy stuff sorry stop talking about it just buy it but amd ryzen 5 5600 leak benchmarks destroy intel core i5 10600k okay leaks benchmarks are accurate the ryzen 5 5600x is shaping up to be a beast yes it is benchmarks for the new one yeah there we go will absolutely flatten rival rival intel using some like flatten destroy smash it beat it up sort of terminology here so we've got cinebench r15 here so we've got 2040 points and 258 for the single core so uh, have we got what's the 10600k so it's beating it by like 57 57 cinebench points on the single core nice and it's beating it by like over 500 well just under five yeah around about 500 on the multi-core as well my math says i've been at work all day boys been at work all day so they're saying it's 42 percent faster in multi-core and 25 percent faster in single core when did you think you were going to say that when did you for ages like i've been really positive about ryzen but every time i made my videos i've always been defending that that there are there has still been a lot of reasons to go intel up until this point if you want them highest frame rates if you're pushing high refresh rate monitors there isn't going to be one is there unless the prices go down because the prices are more expensive so we'll talk about that in a second but this one is even more interesting because we can find out a little bit more on it so this is on cinebench r20 so let's have a look at the r20 scores and oh gonna have to zoom out so we're getting a lot more information here so on the r20 um, I haven't got the Intel equivalent scores though, but we, we already know they're higher from the last test. So it gets 4,746 points in the multi-core. Now my 3600, I think I can max it out at about 3,600, 3,650 without pushing too much, like tweaking the voltage just a little bit and running it with some real fast memory. That's the most I've been able to get out of it in Cinebench anyway. I can't remember what the single core, but the single core is 609 points as well, which doesn't get passed very often. Um, but the little bit few more specs about this so they are using a rog crosshair crosshair 8 hero nice i've still got my original x370 um crosshair it's a shame that i'm not going to be able to use it anymore with the newer cpus because i love that motherboard 16 gigabytes of ram but only at 3200 megahertz but then it's looking like it's yeah cl14 timings at tight timings that's most likely going to be b dies because that's what i push on mine but what's interesting here it's at the end of the benchmark though so i don't know if that's now boosting a bit higher because it's at the end but it's hitting 4.7 gigs on all cores which is nice so if you're talking a ryzen at 4.7 cores 
4.7 cores, 4.7 gigs, and you've got that 25% IPC, it might not be pushing past five gigs, but equivalent to Intel. Do you know what I mean? If you, if you said what an Intel CPU can do, that is going faster than five gigs if you were looking at an Intel one. So, and there is also the, you can overclock Intel as well. Now everyone says you can overclock Ryzen. It'd be very interested to see what it can get. I think there was another one about it running at six gigahertz, but I, I'm not gonna show that one today because I definitely think that was uh, with liquid nitrogen. That's what that's gonna be. But yeah, it's shaping up to look very good. <laughs> Ryzen 5000 is shaping up to look very good. But the reason I don't wanna buy one on Thursday is because there isn't any X series. But then I might buy an AMD GPU in a week or so, which means then I'm going to want to use that direct memory stuff they were talking about on a 5 Series motherboard, which is a bit annoying, isn't it? Because then I, like, I can't use that little feature. But then if you're holding out for the non-Xs and you want to upgrade your B450, you can't use that feature anyway. So, yeah, I just, I just, I think it's too expensive. It's hard to say, isn't it? Because it's 280 pounds for 5600X because that's the CPU I like to buy as well. That mid-rangey CPU is what I like to review on the channel. And to be honest, it's more than enough for me. So when I'm editing on the 3600, you know, if I'm making a very long review video with loads of B-roll, it might take me a day, a day and a half of getting all that footage, writing scripts, doing all that stuff. And it, it, it takes about 15 minutes to render at max. Okay, so if it's only taken me that long to render, it's like it's... It's a very small, it's a small drop in a big ocean of making videos all the time. And like I always say, I'll be doing something else. I'll be making cover art or I'll go for a sandwich or something like that because I'll need to eat by then. So, um, yeah, it's, I don't I don't want to pay that much money, even though it's definitely worth it when you compare it to the competition. You know, I was very I didn't even like paying just over 200 pounds for the 3600 when it launched. OK, I didn't like paying just over that. So for me, I think I'm going to wait for the 5600 non-X, which is going to apparently be at around about 200 to 220 pounds. That's what I want to go for, for a six core. Because if not, it makes me think, well, jump to the eight. But then we've seen this quite a lot with the last generation that there wasn't really a lot in it in gaming when you went from the six core to the eight core um, for the Ryzen 3000 CPU. So you're better off to go to the 12 core. So this is what I'm just thinking now. I'm like, do I just go all out and buy a 12 core on Thursday? which I don't actually really need. It's just that I want one. I don't need it. Like it doesn't, yeah, it's going to speed up my renders, but that's about it. Okay. Yeah. My render times will be hard, but I'm not really going to find anything else where I can fill up that time for it. For my needs, I'm not saying everyone, like if you're a professional that's making money all the time, that's definitely like, you know, really important to you. But for me, it's not. So that's why, you know, six cores, 12 threads is going to be good for me. And they're not actually punching that much more from AMD's release benchmarks. They're only showing like 5% in Premiere Pro anyway. So I could just wait. I know I'm going to get that extra gaming performance. I think it comes down to what GPU I buy. And I'm just hoping the CPUs don't get sold out first because I think I need to buy a GPU, see how the 3600 is running with it. I know, big focus there. I've got a feeling like there will be some bottlenecks even with the 3060 Ti at 1080p if it's punching around a 2080, 2080 Super. I do feel like there's going to be some bottlenecks there, but then I might as well, you know, do I just wait till January when the 5600 comes out? But then are all you going to wait till then? And then am I going to be stuck in another big F5 queue where I can't buy the CPU? Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, those are just my thoughts and feelings um, about you know today's news little tech waffle let me know in the description below let me know um, if you like these videos if you want me to make more make sure you hit the subscribe button and i'll be back very soon